Chinese troll army unleashes tsunami of insults and blasphemy against Islam. According to a report written by Theodorus uh, Benakis for the publication European Interest, the Wu Mao army, also known as the 50 Cent Army, known to be the internet trolls of the Chinese government, has hurt the religious sentiments of Uyghur Muslims on social media several times. The Wu Mao Army is a group of internet critics hired by the authorities of the People's Republic of China, or PRC, to spread information to benefit the governing Chinese Communist Party, or CCP. Benakis explained that China is using quote-unquote Islamophobia to discriminate against Uyghur Muslims by promoting negative beliefs about Islam and therefore justifying the government's brutal policy towards Uyghurs. A policy of cultural genocide is underway in the so-called Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, or XUAR, with the aim of creating quote, a unified China inhabited by a unified people. Chinese leader President Xi Jinping recently reaffirmed his commitment to Beijing's policies in the XUAR at a two-day party conference in September 2020, saying, quote, practice has demonstrated that the party's strategies for governing Xinjiang in the new era is entirely correct, he stated. And I think I misspoke. I meant to say September 2022. Okay, I don't understand. Um, look at this tweet. Read this tweet. As Islamophobia takes play, takes root in the West, there is a silent cultural genocide against the Uyghur Huri Muslims in East, namely China. Not so silent is China's digital troll army, the Wu Mao and Bu Mao, using Weibo platform to spread blasphemous insults against Islam. Hashtag Somalia. Okay, I don't know why they hashtagged Somalia. That's weird as hell. But <laughs> basically, and this was very interesting to me. I didn't know this. Is that, well, Armin, I think you have some familiarity with the Wu Mao army because we follow, like, creators that cover Chinese topics and they're constantly being trolled by the Wu Mao. For those who don't yeah. know, it is like a, a cyber IT army of people who are paid money. I think it's like 50 cents per post or something. I think in reality, it's actually less, but the name Wu Mao or 50 cent like comes from how much they're paid basically to distribute disinformation, propaganda, and also just attack and mass report people who are opposition in opposition to them um and so this report was basically talking about how there's a systemic use of insults and blasphemy against islam as a way to kind of feed into negative attitudes towards the uyghurs which is very interesting i hadn't heard about this before i don't i don't like how does it work like because because we talk we attack and blaspheme against Islam, right? Mm -hmm. But we we don't want to encourage any um, normalization of attacking Muslims, right? Mm -hmm. So my my concern is that how much does this feed into the narrative that attacking Islam normalizes attacking Muslims? And makes it acceptable. I think it happens within a specific context where, so a lot of examples that were given about the blasphemy towards Islam have to do with talking about the age of Aisha and Muhammad being a pedophile and marrying a nine year old and da 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 da. And these are like things that we talk about and things that are known and actually things that are accepted as canon within Islam, right? But then what goes the step too far is saying, like, look, this is why our policies towards Muslims are justified. But do they say that or do they just spread like or does it? OK, so my concern is like because I don't want to be doing something that helps this. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we take a position against Islam and fight against any form of misbehavior or oppression of Muslims. Mm -hmm. Okay, at the same time, right? But how much does our attacks on Islam um, help people who want to normalize attacking Muslims? 
I think it's important for us to check sometimes. Like, do the like are these troll accounts? Are they effective at what they do, or do they do they, when they attack Islam? Do they need to then say something that justifies attacking Muslim for their work to work? Or does just attacking Islam is enough for them to normalize what they're doing? Because I don't want to be helping the, their movement. I don't want to be like, I want to make sure that when we're attacking Islam or we're blaspheming against Islam, we're not helping such people who are like mm -hmm. normalizing a genocide. Yeah, I think in terms of like the actual content that you're asking these questions about like i don't speak mandarin chinese so and i'm not on weibo so like i don't have the availability to go out and really dive into exactly what this looks like in real life you know i have to depend on other people reporting on what kind of content it is what how it's phrased what kind of conclusions they're leading people to right but i think the most important distinction with us is that we're constantly every time we specifically make the distinction between these ideologies and the people and we are always raising issues about the bigotry and mistreatment towards the people to very very clearly make a distinction um i think because your question is like how I'm, I'm repeating my your question back to you to make sure i understand like how much do they actually I just hope that we're different. Like, this is why we're justifying the policies or. I just hope that what we're doing is very different from what they're doing. I just want to mm -hmm. make sure because if what they're doing works, then it could be argued that what we're doing also helps what they're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I know that there is already a, like, okay, my impression. Okay. This is my impression. And based on the media that I've been exposed to and the things that I've seen and interviews with just like average people in China, you know, it's anecdotal. But my impression is that there is an underlying large amount of racism towards the Uyghur population mm. anyways. And so there's like the question of like, how much do you have to lead a horse to water, but like you can't force them to drink it a lot of these posts is kind of it seems like they're leading the horse to water but it's like i don't have to make that extra step of saying oh this is why we're justifying these policies because there's like a baseline understanding that the population is already not sympathetic to the weaker people like at all mm. did that make sense yeah yeah i think i mean the only i mean here's the thing here's how i look at it and you guys can tell me if i'm wrong okay cool. we can't not attack bad ideas okay mm -hmm. islam is a bad idea okay and you cannot ask us not to attack it all right because that that sets a really bad precedent okay that could become even more harmful if we just some some bad ideas are removed right um but at the same time we don't also want to be used by our narratives or the arguments that we make, we don't want to be used for people that mean other people harm, right? We don't want to be used as a way to like, just because some certain people have bad ideas, for that to be, be used as a justification to treat those people any differently, right? Or take away their rights or abuse them or in, in any way. And I, what we, what I think is the only way to treat this is to defend those people that have these ideas at the same time that you attack their ideas. That's the only solution that I could come up with. But if anybody has any feedback, let me know if there's any other way, right? So we, on this, on Atheist Republic, we defend Muslims' rights constantly, more than more obsessively than most Islamic channels, right? Like yeah. we defend Muslims in India and Muslims in China more consistently and more obsessively than the vast majority of the Islamic channels I follow. This atheist channel does that, right? While we constantly attack Islam, we constantly also defend Muslims. And that's the only way that I could figure out to for us to call out bad ideas without feeding into the normalization of abusing them.
Mm-hmm. If you think there's a better way, let us know. No, I agree. Um, there are some really interesting comments in the live chat, which I think are really worth highlighting. So, um, Bara is saying genocide is real. Islamophobia is not. Yes. For those who are not aware, people really criticize the idea of Islamophobia because it's, you know, talking about an idea as instead of actually talking about the bigotry towards people. Um, and D is saying the motivations are different. Atheist Republic doesn't advocate for cultural genocide and concentration camps. True. We actively oppose those things. Good things to oppose. Um, and Gaijin American is saying the conclusion is that the CPC can reform Islam. Some people really believe that a lot of Uyghurs deserve these work camps, that they're lucky that they're not executed outright. Unfortunately, based on, you know, my research and everything I've learned about the situation over the past few years, this seems to be a pretty widespread idea. Like I've seen interviews of people in China and just like people on the street asked about what their opinion is about what's happening in Xinjiang. The stuff they say is shocking. It's mm. shocking. So, um, and, oh, this is a great comment from Asian American saying we are challenging bad ideas in consent filled spaces. The CPC is violating their bodily consent. That would be an understatement. Yes, on so many different levels. Um, uh, Higgs Boson is saying 63 watching, only 30 likes. Hey, guys, make sure to hit that like button. Thank you for reminding us, Higgs Boson. And um, Shirash is saying, attack CC- Chinese faith and CCP the same way you attack Hindutva, Atheist Republic. We often we do. do. Yeah, we often do. Probably not as much as Hindutva, but we do often. Because Chinese faith. I mean, um, the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party has had a love-hate relationship with Confucianism, right? So they went in, they started going extremely anti-Confucianist as something that communism is against tradition and previous tradition and faith and stuff and stuff. But now what we have the CCP today is legalism um, with communist branding and Confucianist taste. So today you think it's legalism? Yeah, today I think the CCP is legalist in practice, uh, Confucianist in, you know, in marketing and communist only in branding so they're using confucianism as a way to promote the chinese brand because it's not about communism anymore it's about chinese it's about the chinese brand right so it's any anything that is associated with china it's good right so confusion and it's the chinese brand so you want to sh- increase your soft power around the world. It doesn't matter if that Confucianism was something that the Communist Party used to be completely against. It's Chinese. Because it's Chinese, it's a good thing to promote um, as a way to um, increase your soft power around the world. I mean, increase also, if you brand. want to enforce social hierarchy, Confucianism is one of the best ways to do right. it. It's right. so right. socially and strictly stratifying. It's it's crazy. Like yeah. when I read about Confucianism, my skin starts to crawl because it's so strict and oppressive into how you're supposed to act sheerly on the basis of your way of relating to another person and not of their qualities in any capacity. I would go insane. Actually, Gaijin American is saying it a lot better than I did. Legalist in the government, Marxist in branding, Confucian, Confucius in the house. Okay. And yeah, the Confucius okay, in the house. Ha- yeah, and also Confucius in um, branding outside of your borders, a soft power as well. Um, the Confucius in the house is very important because it's Confucius is anti-liberal, right? Confucius has very strict family structures, uh, so it's it works very well again to as a way to create a base against 
the world liberal order that is the restructuring the family and it's becoming a lot more flexible with the understanding of mother and father and man and woman and all that stuff so many places try to do that with islam and christianity and you will find that confucianist because it has very specific roles for people and family it's a very good way for the chinese ideology to resist this li this liberalism that is like they see as a threat so there's that as well so yeah i think like going after confucianism might be a good thing for us to do as well but we need more yeah um yeah, people are reminding you to like and subscribe, guys. Like a lot of people are watching the show, and I don't know. It doesn't take it doesn't take much effort for you guys to like the video, and it really helps us, and it doesn't cost you anything. So please, while you're watching, just like the video. And we bring and, you juicy stories every week. Yeah, GJ. Yeah, GJ is saying even Tommy Robinson claimed uh, okay or claims to want to protect even Muslims from Islam. Okay, yeah, but Tommy Robinson has says might say that but the way he talks about muslims um as foreign invaders makes it yeah, clear it that he reflect that. doesn't really reflect the that claim harris sultan says sponsor my channel too then please <laughs> yes guys please subscribe to harris sultan channel um official sponsor of our channel i'm just joking but yeah go subscribe to it you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.